So Classic WoW has been out for about a week, and obviously most of you guys are still in the leveling process, some people may be just starting, and some tryhards may even be near to level 60. But either way, leveling up in Classic WoW is definitely a time consuming process, so you need all the help you can get. Fortunately, there are some really strong items that you can get at low levels that can drastically increase your stats compared to anything else that you can get at that level. There are a lot of really cool items that you can get that will just make it that much easier to grind mobs in Classic WoW. Starting off at number 5 is Ravager. Now Ravager is definitely one of the most iconic items that you can find in Classic WoW, and for good reason. Not only does this axe look really cool, but it's just incredibly useful. The unique effect on the axe is quite game changing. Now up until this point, the other items that you can get as a melee DPS are pretty standard upgrades. For one, you have the Corpse Maker that you can get from RFK, which is a really strong two-handed axe that a lot of warriors really look forward to getting. And then later you can get the Whirlwind Axe, which again is a huge DPS upgrade that you can get at the time. However, what makes Ravager special is the unique proc that it has. Now Ravager not only has really high damage per second and a slow attack speed, but it also has one of the most insane game-changing procs that you can get in Classic WoW. And best of all, to get this axe you don't need to do any long quest chain, it is as simple as running Scarlet Monastery Arm Wing, which you will be probably farming anyway, and it just so happens Herald has a 25% chance of dropping this axe. As I mentioned before, once you get this axe, it basically opens you up to a lot more AoE potential. The proc on this axe basically makes it so that your normal auto attacks do AoE damage with 5 extra weapon damage for about 10 seconds. So the proc on this axe basically turns you into an AoE farming machine and a lot of groups that are just grinding out dungeon runs will prioritize melee DPS with this axe, simply because it basically turns you into a dungeon clearing machine which gives you a really insane amount of XP per hour. Now the one drawback to this is that once you're in the Bladestorm state, you can no longer move, you're basically locked in place until you use an ability, or you can actually turn the buff off. Once the proc has happened, you can either right click on the buff that you have, or an easier way is to create a macro, I believe it's slash cancel aura, blade storm, and doing this gives you full control of your character. To be honest, I don't know if there's any other axe in the game that is this game changing, like it literally changes the way your class plays, however it's only a level 37 axe, so it's not going to last you very long, but for the time period that you get this, this is a very useful axe, and especially strong at its level. So number 4 on this list is the Crescent Staff. Now as I mentioned before, there's quite a lot of items that you can get in Classic WoW, however they require a quest chain. Now this quest chain is a little bit hard, but fortunately the reward that you get from it is the Crescent Staff. The Crescent Staff just has a really insane amount of DPS, compared to pretty much any two-handed weapon that you can get at the time. Now unfortunately this is for the Horde only, however if you're on a Horde and you play as any kind of melee class, you definitely need to get this staff, even if you're warrior, because to be honest, the DPS on this staff will be way better than any two-handed axe or two-handed sword that you can find. So to start this quest, you first need to take the quest Hammerall Rune Totem, which you get at the crossroads, which will basically require you to speak to a guy in Thunder Bluff. So for many of you guys, if you haven't been to Thunder Bluff yet, you need to walk all the way there, and it's kind of a long trek. Then you have another quest where you speak to another person in Thunder Bluff, and then finally you get the quest Leaders of the Fang and this requires you to kill 4 of the bosses in Wailing Caverns, which to be honest this quest is easy to overlook if you don't know that it exists. Before you go into Wailing Caverns make sure that you get this quest, because the reward is that good. The Crescent Staff gives you 20.3 DPS and this is a staff that you can get at about level 19. Even though this is a staff, it is just an absolute damage machine and a warrior should definitely get it. I know it's kind of weird that a warrior is using a staff, but if you're in the know, you know that this weapon is is absolutely overpowered for the level that you get it. In addition, it's also got some decent stats, 7 intellect, spirit, and stamina, so even for a mana based class this is also useful. To be honest, I think every class in the game will benefit from getting this. It is just that good whether you're a healer, a mana based DPS, a hunter, a warrior, no matter who you are, this is just a very good two handed weapon to get. So make sure you look out for this if you're around level 20 on the horde. Okay, so number 3 on this list is Thrashblade. 
So guys, this is an item that you get kind of later on, kind of like in the late 40s, early 50s, but the item itself is extremely strong. In fact, I'm pretty sure that apes, the guild that beats Ragnaros the first, a vast majority of their melee DPS were using this sword. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. And you can get this way before level 60, you can get this from a quest in Moradon, both Horde and Alliance can get this, like the quest hub that you have in Desolus will both have their version of this quest that you can pick up. And oh my god, if you're playing a warrior or a rogue, you definitely need to get this, because just look at the stats of this. Not only is this an amazing main hand for its insane DPS, but also it has a very cool proc that gives you an extra swing on your weapon. How cool is that? It's like a mini sword specialization proc built into the weapon itself. And this quest starts at level 45. So I believe that you can get the quest for Corruption of Earth and Seed starting at level 45. So even as early as 45 you can get this amazing weapon that will pretty much last you until level 60. And even then it's pretty strong for level 60. You need to kill Princess Feridas, which to be honest for a lot of melee DPS you're going to be farming this anyway to get the Blackstone Ring. But a nice little bonus is you get this amazing sword. So yeah, definitely go get this if you're playing a rogue or warrior. So number two on this list is the Gravestone Scepter. So guys, I feel like the majority of the items on this list have pretty much just been focused on melee DPS. Now there is a reason for that. Melee DPS are very much gear dependent, like they're only as good as the weapon that they have. Whereas cost of DPS, I mean, there's not really any particular piece of gear that can vastly increase your DPS, simply because of the way that stats work in Classic WoW. For example, Intellect will only give you a small chance to increase your critical strike chance with spells, the spell damage gear that you can get is way later, so to be honest, low level casters are actually kind of getting the shaft when it comes to gear. However, there's one exception. For a lot of caster DPS, you're going to be using a rotation where you use your wand while your mana regenerates. The most notable example of this is the priest. The best rotation you have for killing mobs is going to be front loading your spells and then using your wand while your mana regenerates. And to be honest, wands are pretty busted in Classic Well, like they do a lot of damage, much more than you would think. Classes like Warlock and Priest are the most notable examples of using your wand to do DPS. Now the Gravestone Scepter is honestly insane. I was speaking about the DPS of the Crescent Staff being like 20.3 DPS. However, the Gravestone Scepter can be gotten as early as level 19, and it has 29 DPS. 29. So for comparison's sake, comparing this to the Greater Magic Wand, which is what a lot of casters will be using at that level, only has 17.5 DPS. So this is pretty much doubling the DPS of your wand just by getting this. So to get the Gravestone Scepter comes from a quest called Black Fathom Villainy, and it involves you killing the second to last boss in Black Fathom Deeps. Both Horde and Alliance can get this, and this item is so good that a lot of twinks back in the day would take advantage of this, simply because of how busted this item is. Definitely get this, especially if you're playing a Priest or a Warlock. This wand will last you a very long time. So guys, before I get into number one, please follow me on Twitch. Now, I get a lot of comments on YouTube, so it's hard for me to interact with you guys. However, I am streaming Classic WoW on Twitch, and I've been streaming the past few days, and it's been a lot of fun. It's really cool to talk to you guys, so drop by on my Twitch and give me a follow. So with that being said, let's get into number one. So number one on this list is the Tidal Charm. Now, this is a very weird item, but an absolutely broken item that you can get at a relatively low level. So guys, this is a level 36 trinket, which is absolutely infamous for being one of the most annoying trinkets to fight against in PvP. So guys, basically the Tidal Charm is a trinket that when you used, stuns a target for 3 seconds on a 15 minute cooldown. Now you may not think that this is much, however think about this. This is a 3 second stun that can be used at range instantly. In Classic WoW, where there's not many classes that can stun to begin with, this is just a really good gap filler for pretty much every class in the game. Considering how bursty Classic WoW PvP is, this is the difference between winning a PvP battle and losing one. So the Tidal Charm is pretty much best in slot for PvPers with almost every class, and this only requires level 36 to use. However, there's a big catch to this, and how hard this is to acquire. All the other things on this list will basically be acquired through playing the game casually. 
However, there is no casual way to get this item. The title charm is infamous for being one of the hardest and rarest items in the game. So to give some context as to how to get this item, this drops from a rare mob called Prince Nasjak, which, get this, spawns between 32 and 48 hours. Yes, you heard me correctly, one Prince Nasjak will spawn every 32 to 48 hours. Just one. And even then, to make things even funnier, it has a 40% chance of dropping the tidal charm. In the southern part of Arafi Highlands, in the underwater place with a bunch of Nagas. You'll spend a few seconds here and will be absolutely frustrated trying to farm this, because this is an underwater zone. And you're pretty much going to be moving around at 50% movement speed while you're down here, and you'll have to have some item that can give you breathing. So you need an underwater breathing potion, or a hydrocane, or something like that. So to get this item is absolutely a nightmare. However, the item is so good. So inevitably, there's going to be quite a lot of people trying to get this trinket. It's just that, even if you get the Miracle Spawn, which is between 32 to 48 hours, you still only have about a 40% chance of getting this item. So even then, it's just such a long shot. But strictly speaking, you can actually use this starting at level 36, and this is pretty much best in slot for level 60s of all classes, because of its utility in both defensive and aggressive PvP. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Vaulty, signing out.